Welcome to part one of the fundamental theorem of line integrals. The fundamental theorem of line integrals, as stated here, states that if a vector field is conservative, then the line integral between any two points forming curve C is the difference in the values of the potential function little f at these two points, regardless of the path. So the line integral would be path independent. And this is also sometimes called the gradient theorem. So now, to evaluate a line integral, we have a choice of methods. This first method here requires us to parameterize the curve in terms of t, rewrite the vector field in terms of t, dot it with r prime of t, and integrate with respects to t. And this method does not require the potential function. However, if c is conservative, and we can easily determine the potential function, we could take advantage of the fundamental theorem of line integrals. The third option is, if f is conservative, we could use method one, but use a much simpler path because we know that if f is conservative, the path would be independent. So in this video, we'll take a look at one example and evaluate the line integral using all three of these methods. And we'll start by using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So first, we'll check to make sure this is a conservative vector field. Since this is a vector field in R2, we have to check to make sure that the partial derivative of g with respects to x is equal to the partial derivative of f with respects to y, where f would be x, y squared, and g would be x squared, y. Well, the partial derivative of g with respects to x would be two x, y, and the partial derivative of f with respects to y would also be two x, y. So this is a conservative vector field. So the next step is to determine the potential function so we can determine the value of this line integral. Since f is conservative, we know that the vector field f is equal to the gradient of little f. So this tells us the partial derivative of f with respects to x would be x y squared, and the partial derivative of f with respects to y would be x squared y. So now we'll integrate x y squared with respects to x, and then integrate x squared y with respects to y. And by comparing these two antiderivatives, we can determine the potential function. So here we're going to have one half x squared y squared plus a function of y. And in respects to y, we're going to have the same thing plus a possible function of x. But since these are equal to each other, we can conclude that the potential function f of x y would be equal to one half x squared y squared plus a constant c. So we can use this function to evaluate the line integral. So let's do that on the next page. So before we evaluate this, let's take a look at our path. We start at the origin, or the point zero, zero, and we finish at the point three, three. And these are the only two points we need to determine the value of this line integral. This is gonna be equal to f of three, three minus f of zero, zero. Replacing x and y with three, we'll have one half times three squared times three squared minus, and then when x and y are zero, this would be zero. So we have nine times nine, that's 81 times one half, or 81 halves. So using the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we were able to determine the value of this line integral using the potential function. So we just use method two. And now what we're gonna do is use method three, where we know f is conservative, but now we can define a simpler path and then use method one, where we parameterize everything in terms of t. So looking at our path here, a simpler path would just be the line from the origin to the point three, three. So we'll use this path instead of the blue path. And knowing the equation of this line would be y equals x is going to be helpful. So if we let x equal t and y equal t, then t would be on the closed interval from zero to three. Now we can rewrite our line integral in terms of t. T's gonna go from zero to three. F written in terms of t would be t cubed and t cubed. And r prime of t would be one, one. 
So when we have t cubed plus t cubed or two t cubed, integrating with respect to t, we're gonna have two times t to the fourth over four. That'll give us one half t to the fourth. So when t is three, we'll have one half times three to the fourth, which of course is also 81 halves. Here we didn't use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, but we did take advantage of knowing that the vector field was conservative and therefore path independent, meaning we could redefine the path. Now let's take a look at the same problem using the original technique for integrating line integrals. So we have two paths to consider, path one and path two. The equation of curve one would be y equals three halves x, and the equation for curve two would be y equals three. So let's go ahead and parameterize our curve in terms of t. So for curve one, if we let x equal t, and y equal three halves t, and t would be on the closed interval from zero to two. And for the second curve, x starts at two and goes to three, so if we let x equal t, and the interval for t would be from two to three, that works perfectly, and the y component would stay constant at three. So because we have two curves, we have to set up two integrals in terms of t. We're first gonna have t from zero to two, where x, y squared would be t times the quantity three halves t squared. That'll be nine fourths t to the third. And then x squared y would be t squared times three halves t, or three halves t cubed. Dotted with r prime of t, that would be one three halves. Integrate with respect to t. And our second integral is gonna be from two to three where x, y squared would be nine t, and x squared y would be three t squared. And our prime of t would be one zero. So as you can see, the original method in this problem is gonna take a lot more work than the previous two methods. Let's go ahead and finish this on the next page. Okay, so here we're gonna have nine fourths t cubed plus another nine-fourths t cubed. It'll be 18 fourths or nine-halves t cubed. Here we'll just have nine t. So we'll have nine-halves times t to the fourth over four. Here we'll have nine times t squared over two. So we're placing t with two, we're gonna have 16 divided by four, that's four. Four times nine halves, that's gonna be 18. And then when t is zero, we'll have zero. Over here, when t is three, we'll have 81 halves. And then when t is two, we'll have 18. So notice the 18 simplify out, and the final result is also 81 halves. So hopefully now you see the advantage of using the fundamental theorem of line integrals when you know the vector field is conservative. In part two, we'll take a look at some more examples just using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Thank you for watching.